It's Sony Stratford's YouTube channel, and uh, we've got another special guest with us today. It's Rob Keogh, who played for the club a few years ago before going on and having what's been a pretty decent career in first-class cricket with North Hans. So good evening. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Not bad, not bad. So you guys, not too far till the season now. Are you able to train properly, or is it still in, in funny bubbles? It's at the minute, it's still in funny bubbles. We were actually meant to be outside today um, for the first time and the weather put a bit of, <laughs> bit of a stop to that. It was too wet um, for us to get outdoors. So we, we stayed indoors again, which is getting pretty boring this time of year. You want to get out and onto the grass and get a bit of sun on your back. We normally, this time of year, we'd be abroad pre-season somewhere Um so the lads are getting a bit frustrated and just sort of chomping at the bit, ready to go, really. OK, well, we'll get on to what's happened in your uh, professional career in a second. But I want to take you back, first of all, to when you joined us. Now, obviously, there are lies, damn lies, and there are play cricket statistics. But it yeah. looks like 10 games for us in 2012. You averaged 80. You got a ton. You got a few wickets as well, including a five for. What do you remember about that season? Oh, bloody hell. Uh, I didn't remember it being that good, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I'll, ta I'll take that. I wish I had that in first class cricket. I'll tell you that for free. Um, I love my time there. I remember playing there um, when I was on the academy, when the academy used to be in the league. Um, and I used to love playing at Stoney. One reason was I was I'm brought up in Dunstable. Oh, yeah. um, so it used to save me driving all the way up to Northampton. I could just hop off on the A5 to Stoney uh, and the tees were amazing. Um, so as soon as I uh, got the chance to come and play, I was like, yes, yeah, absolutely perfect for me. Um, and I knew a couple of the guys from where I'd been playing in the league for a few years. Um, you sort of get to know people as you do. And I just thought, yeah, it's per perfect for me at the time. And I loved, loved playing there. So how, how does that work? I mean, at the start of the season, you're a young professional. You're possibly not going to get as many games for Northampton's first at the time. So are you given a list of clubs you can play for or is it basically a case of they'll say, right, you're off to Stony, son? It was a little bit of that for guys who hadn't really experienced the league that much and guys who had come down from wherever. We had a guy come down from Lancashire, um, who obviously wouldn't know anything about the North Ants League. So they sort of get assigned clubs. But where I'd been playing in the league for the academy side, um, I think I played when I was 14. Um, so Rip sort of just said, look, you, the academy is no longer. Um, do you want to find yourself a club or we can help you find a club? Um, and I remember speaking to Rich Owen and agreed to sign at Stoney. So you, you've told us you enjoyed the tees and you enjoyed getting off the A5. Um, from a cricketing perspective, what did you get out of playing in that season? What did you learn? Just the opportunity to... I think every opportunity to play league cricket helped me so much. Um, it's so different to first-class cricket um, in terms of the wickets, the styles of bowling, um, and for me, it was just try. There was a little bit of pressure. I felt like there was a little bit of pressure because you're always expected to score runs. But if you don't, then you're not very good, if that makes sense. Um, but you shouldn't be a pro. So I always found that there was, I was always a bit nervous, to be honest. And I think the nerves helped me try, want to try and win games for Stoney. Um, it sort of makes you want to. I'm here for a reason. Um, I want to win games. And then doing well and seeing the other lads enjoying the success and having a beer after and having a mess around in the change room, I, I absolutely loved it. And presumably, although a lot of the Stony lads have played to a good standard, they haven't played professional cricket, you're learning, I suppose, the part of the game that you don't learn by batting and bowling, you know, the, the sort of, intrinsic it in, I can't even say the word you know just just the bits outside of the game the gamesmanship all those sort of things as well yeah definitely. and I still I still think I would have been fairly immature as well when I was at Stony I was 
you know, still fairly young. Um, so being around adults in different circles of life to what I'm used to, I moved out of home when I was um, 18 to rent in Northampton. Um, but I'm always renting with people like me. So actually being with different sort of people and being with adults, um, I learned so much away from the cricket. I grew up massively. Um, I met some great contacts, actually, which has definitely helped me um, for life after cricket. When that day comes, um, you, you get to meet people that you wouldn't necessarily have met before. And I'm told from people that have played with you that you were a tough opponent to play against and to play with as well. Um, and also a few other bits and bobs from a few of the lads as well. What have I got down here? You played against us for Rushton at one point and you had quite a good day out, but so did Strongy, from what I recall. <laughs> Strongy probably got me out. That's why, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, God, I must have played against Stoney a few times. I, my memory isn't that good, so I can't tell you. I do remember playing um, playing against Stoney at Rushton, actually, when... Um, Graham White's brother, Rusty, was playing. Um, I remember trying to have a bit of a laugh with uh, with Rusty. And I know Ben Ducky actually came to watch because he's good mates with Rusty and the Stony boys. And he was only around the corner. Um, so, yeah, I remember trying to trying to get after Rusty a little bit more for, for the banter, really. And then I think Strongy cleaned me up at the other end. Yeah, I think he got six wickets that day. It was certainly... When oh, we yeah, definitely, definitely cleaned me up there. Have a, have a look at that Russian game. And I, and I looked at the scoreboard and I think I realised why. Um, well, he bought me a beer after. I think we went out in Milton Keynes that night. So he bought me a beer. He owed me one. Well, that's entirely fair enough. So a lot of the people watching this <laughs> will have played North Ants Prem, but not many of them will have played county cricket. So from your point of view, how big is the step up from Prem to county? Um... I've not played in the Prem for a while now. Um, but at the time, I thought it was a decent standard. I, I'd come from playing club cricket for Dunstable in the second team to then playing academy in the league and thinking the standard was a lot better. Obviously, it was Dunstable second team, but still I was playing with guys like Andy Reynoldson, who was playing in the second team at North Ants. Um, Tom Brett, who was signed pro. Um, with us. There was guys like Rushton had guys over as overseas who were playing professionally in Australia and stuff. So I always thought the standard was pretty pretty good, to be honest. Um, like I said, I haven't played for a few years now, so I can't can't comment um, now. But definitely, when I was playing, I always felt that each team in the prem had two or three, if not. You look at Finder and they had a lot of good players who had either played for North Ants before or had certainly been on the academy and played in second team. So it was still a decent standard. And I know a lot of guys in the North Ants League actually played for Bedfordshire as well. Um, I played with them for Beds. Um, so that just shows that the standard is, is still pretty decent. Is there a difference in the level of sledging? I mean, does, does sledging happen <laughs> less in the county <laughs> game? Because you're all kind of... You know you're all of a certain standard and you like to think it doesn't get into people's heads or have I got that one wrong? I, I think nowadays it's changed a little bit. Maybe I'm, I'm a little bit more senior now, but I think the younger lads tend to get it um, at county cricket where they try and find you out. They try and find a weakness, see what you like, but you play against people so often um, and see each other so much in the county season. Um you'll soon get a reputation for being a bit of an idiot. Um, so I, I just think it's sort of filtered out of the game, unless, like I say, unless you are young and they're just trying to suss you out a little bit. But everyone, it's quite weird. Everyone's like mates. Like I've played against guys who are my year who I played, would have played Midlands cricket with um, at other clubs. Worcester, for example, I played with Brett D'Olivera and Coxie um, in the Midlands setup. So the only real sledging you get is like a bit of banter, like a bit of friendly, friendly banter from mates. There's not much, not much that goes on. Or maybe I'm just lucky and I dodge it or, or I don't bat long enough to get any. 
So when you're up up at Stony in a in in a in a Premier League game, would would you expect to have been targeted by the opposition? You know, would, would they look at you and go, right, Rob's the guy who's probably going to get the runs. He might get a few wickets as well. So would you expect to get a little bit more chatter because of that? Uh, I think so. I expected more at Dunstable. Um, I played a couple of games for Dunstable in the last couple of years and got got a bit of stick. But that's more... It's like I said at the start, you almost have to score runs because if you if you score runs it's like well you should score runs if you don't score runs it's how are you a pro um which i always found quite frustrating because anyone can get out to anyone on any day any wicket um but in the league i for stony i never really got much there was the odd like bit of banter with you know aj as actor the the league legend um like those sort of guys who would give a little bit saying you're never going to make it or that sort of seen loads of young lads like you come through the setup playing uh, and filter up by the wayside, but nothing really. It's, it's similar to county cricket, really. I guess you once you've played in the league for a few years, you get to know everyone. And once you've had a beer after in the changing room or in the pavilion at the end, you, you realise that everyone's actually a decent bloke away from away from the field. Now, a quick question. Obviously, you've got a few years left, fingers crossed, in the county game. But I've been asked, would you come and play for Stoney again when you're done? Definitely, yeah. Definitely. Good Definitely. Stuff. I had a great time there. I had a really good time. Um, the lads are brilliant. I wouldn't have to face Strongy again. <laughs> um, so that's always a bonus. Um, and if the tees are still as good as they were, then phew, sign me up. Well, we had to make our own last year, unfortunately. We probably will again this summer, but we'll, we'll <laughs> see. Um, so that's that's good news. We'll have to get that down in writing somewhere, I think, about you coming back to play for us. I think it's you and James Hildreth who have both said, when it's all done, fingers crossed, you might come back and play. So that's good. You talked about well, Australia maybe, there. I think he's sneaking in just ahead of me. He's, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, well, he's probably still got a few more years in the county game. He's still going very strong. I think he's got at least another year at Somerset from what he was telling me before, just after Christmas. Um, you talked about Australia briefly there, um, and I've talked about sledging. So let's put those two together. You played in Australia about the same time as you played for Sony as well. What was that like? Uh, that was interesting. Um, <laughs> my first trip to Australia, I learned, like you said before, away from cricket. I learned so much. I grew up, I lived with a family who... I literally rocked up from the airport, got a phone call to say we're second car on the left. Never met these people, never spoke to them um, as a young 18-year-old the other side of the world and realised I am seriously immature. 18-year-old <laughs> um, trying to cook for himself, do his own washing that I'd never done, really. Um, so that was a massive learning curve for me, just building my own relationships with from scratch, really. Um, but it gave me a lot of time to work on my cricket. I, I actually had a part-time job as a swimming pool cleaner. Um, so I was going around all the mansions in Melbourne, um, cleaning out people's swimming pools part-time because they sponsored the club. Um, and they let me get off to training. And I had a, a lot of time to train with guys at the club who loved cricket, guys who were similar age to me and were at uni or at, at school um, and had a bit of time off on their summer holidays who just wanted to train. So it was perfect for me. We were going down to the nets near on every day um, and absolutely loved it. And everyone that I speak to or you read autobiographies all says that Australian cricket at that level, it's contested like it's a test match. You know, it's all about banter on the pitch and then having a beer afterwards. And you, you, you play against some of the test players or at least first-class players from time to time. So what was your experience like with the actual cricket? Um, well, that, that year I was playing suburban turf, they call it, or something like that. So it wasn't grade cricket then. It was, it was a little bit lower down. And the first game I rocked up on the Saturday and there was no sight screens. That was a bit of a shock. Like everyone has sight screens over here. It's just a given, I think. Um, and that was 
brut- the chat was fairly brutal. Like they've seen young eighteen year old lad. Let's get stuck in, and it is like what it says on the tin. When you go to Australia, you get abused. Um, but yeah, afterwards was all was all fun and games. Uh, a few few years later, I went back to Melbourne and played grade cricket. Um, and played against some good players actually. Marcus Stoinis. I had a bit of a run in with Marcus Stoinis before he would before. I think he was over from WA trialing for Victoria at the time, so he wasn't wasn't yet a professional cricketer or anywhere near what he is now and his sort of temperament he he had a clash with our captain at the time who was David Elaine who played for Knotts and Middlesex um and I sort of thought I've got to go and help him out a little bit here and went down next thing you know Marcus Stoinis has got his head on the helmet and he is a big man let me tell you that he's probably bigger (laughs) now than what he was he's probably bigger then than what he is now he put his head on the helmet, and then I realised, Jesus Christ, I better rein it in here. He's got he's got a few uh, kilos on me. I'll uh, I'll let it go. But yeah, there's it is different. It's just different. It is. It's, I'd like to say nasty, but it's not really nasty because they're actually really good people off the field. They all want and sit and have a beer and talk talk stories and talk cricket after. Um, they just play so hard which I think is great if you get used to it, which you sort of do once you've been out there a few times and you know what you're expecting, you laugh it off, you know you're going to have a couple of crownies after and see you next week. for the. That was the strangest thing, your two-day games that were over two Saturdays, so you couldn't just leave it on the park. You had to go back next week after having a beer with them and then getting abused after they've been really nice to you the, uh, the Saturday evening the week before. It almost sounds like we could do a separate Zoom on Rob's tales from Australia, but uh, well, I'll tell you what, we'd need more than forty minutes. <laughs> but for now, let, let's let's go on to your, your your career as a professional. So, done my research. A double century in only your seventh match in first class cricket, unless I've got that wrong. I'm getting a nod, which is good. At that, I'm, at, I'm guessing seventh. It was fair, reasonably <laughs> early, I think. At that point, did you think you'd cracked the first class game and that it was going to be easy from then on? Um, not really, to be honest. It was, it was all a bit strange that year. Um, I felt like I was having a really good season in the twos. Um, but the ones were also having a good year. We got promoted that year in 2013. Um, and I just couldn't get in the side. I was scoring loads of runs in the twos. I was trying to go and play for beds if beds had a game around second team cricket um i was just trying to play as much as i could because i felt in such good form and i just wanted to cash in um but just couldn't break into the side until rob newton snapped his achilles or something like that his ankle ligaments um which meant that there was a spot come up in the middle order um and newts was having a really good year um and he's a good mate of mine so i felt it's a bit bittersweet, really. I felt really sorry for Newts because he was having such a good year and doing so well. But it also gave me my opportunity um, to get in there and sort of continue my good form, really. Um, but I struggled the first couple of games just trying to get used to it, I guess. I, every level you jump up, there is a significant sort of difference. Um, and then we went down to the Rose Bowl and it was... It was actually it was quite interesting. We were twenty for three or twenty one for three or something when I went in at five, and I was thinking, oh god, it's a bit of a nothing to lose, nothing to lose really. If I get out with twenty for four, everyone else has got out, and if I do well, then must be doing all right. Um, and luckily, the pitch got better and better, and I was able to cash in. It was actually my first um, fifty and my first hundred that I managed to turn into a double. So. That sort of helped um, going into contract negotiations because I was out of contract at the time and they'd, they'd sort of said to, um, there was myself and two others and they'd just said that between the three of you, there's only two contracts available. It's whoever does the best gets the, the two contracts and at the time, I was in really good form in the second team and managed to get myself in in the first team after Newt's got injured. And 
got a couple of scores in the one day comp and then after getting the double at Hampshire, my confidence just, like you say, not really cracked it, but it was like, I do belong here. If I can get a double hundred playing against Hampshire or a really good side, um, then I'm not really out of my depth. I, I can sort of hold my hold my own. And I ended up finishing the season quite well and we got promoted, which was brilliant. Um, so I felt part of the sort of celebrations and, and stuff because I think I played probably 10 out of the 14 or 16 games it would have been back then. So I felt like I was really part of it. Whereas sometimes, you know, as a second team sort of fringe player, your team gets promoted and it's fantastic, but you you feel like you haven't really contributed. You you just done the odd day a twelfth man or or whatever. But it was yeah, it was a great great sort of first year if you like for me as a pro. So you talk there about the double hundred making those contract negotiations go a little bit smoother than they would have done maybe. On the other hand, now you're the guy who's got his double hundred in in his first ten games in first class cricket. Does that put an extra amount of pressure on you? And did you find going into the next season that you were suddenly a guy that the opposition looked at and thought, we've got to get this guy out? Uh, a little bit, actually. It was I didn't really think too much of it, to be honest, until um, we had a game at home a couple of weeks after and Jack Birkinshaw, who's um, like a spin mm. consultant yeah. around the country, goes, works for the ECB, um, but does a lot of private stuff or did a lot of private stuff with us at North Ends. Um, he mentioned to Darren Stevens, who's county legend. Everyone knows who Steve-O is. Um, you better get this guy out. Got double 100 a couple of weeks ago down at Roseboy. He went, oh, yeah, we know. We saw that. And I just didn't think people really, like, like someone like Steve, I didn't think he would know who I was necessarily. Probably just saw oh, he's got some runs. But it does made me think, well, if they're, thinking I can go big, then it's, you know, it's quite exciting. Like, it's quite exciting. It does build your confidence and everyone needs that little confidence boost at some point because there's times where you're the, you're the opposite. You can't score a run and you're trying, trying your hardest to find a way to just get into double figures just to try and turn your form on his head, really. So Jumbo always used to say to me, cash in when you're feeling good and you're feeling confident cash in because you never know when things are going to change and that that's always stuck with me for from a guy who scored thousands and thousands of first class runs to sort of offer that advice has been very helpful for me now obviously there aren't enough english batsmen arguably scoring double hundreds in their first 10 games so when you did that were people starting to talk oh, this guy you know could go on and play international cricket was there any talk like that at that moment uh, a little bit. I actually, um, I actually got asked to represent England under 19s, which I'd never done. The highest I'd got was Midlands, like I said earlier, but I, they didn't know that I was too old. Um, so I think I was 20 or 21 at the time. So I'd passed the England under 19s age. Um, and I had a pretty good year. Um, the year after I broke, broke a couple of fingers, literally, I think I missed almost half of the season. But when I played, we were in Div 1 as well. Um, when I played, I had, had a pretty good pretty good year. Scored a couple of hundreds in in those games. Scored a hundred in a tour match against Sri Lanka um, when they had their main test players playing. I remember Sangakara and um, Jai Wardner both playing. Um and Chaminda Vass, where he'd been with us before, said how pleased and how good it was to watch. And that sort of gave another boost. And you know people look at, they always look at the touring games. It's always a great opportunity for young players to play, score runs and get people's attention. Because there's always Sky Sports cameras there that sort of come and report on the game and how the touring side are getting on. So that was always a nice one to play in for me. I know a lot of older guys try and use it as rest. If they're playing all the all the fixtures, it can be nice sometimes just to have four days off and, and have a chill out. But I, as a young lad, I think they're definitely ones if you get asked to play, to try and play. Um, 
there was little talks of potential England Lions call ups if if things carried on. Um, I sort of went the other way. I then had a slight dip in form and started to search search for things. Started trying to change my technique, which wasn't really needed at the time. It was just me being a young lad out of form, searching for perfection and tweaking things for the wrong reasons really and ending up making that form worse um maybe all because of the talks of if he carries on he'll get a lion's call up and i think every young boy wants to represent their country at some point so maybe they'll let that get to my head a little bit i'm not sure i always ask this question when i speak to you guys because if i you know i play for stony thirds if I get a duck on a Saturday, no one cares, life moves on. If you get a couple of ducks and then, you know, you, you, you're in the second team and your contract's coming up, that must be really hard because obviously it's it's your livelihood. You've got to pay the mortgage. It is, yeah, it is. And that's one of the hardest things about county cricket is when things are going well, the games come thick and fast and you can keep your run going and it's amazing. But if things are the other way around, you haven't got enough time to turn it around without going and playing second team and second team cricket now is played. You don't get a chance to play at the county grounds as much. Um, so sometimes the wickets aren't, aren't what you'd like as a batter. Um, so you just find yourself in slumps of form and it's all from experience now. I can, I can just say it is all mental. Um, obviously there's times where you do need to tweak your technique and you get the cameras out and stuff, but, it's just remembering you got to where you are with that technique um, and just backing your ability and backing that things will change because they will at some point. So that's you as a batsman, and I'm sure we'll get back to that in a second. But obviously there's the second string to your bow, and I'm going to talk about a certain match against Glamorgan back in 2016 in a minute because I'm sure you've got plenty to say about that one. But as someone who bowls spin on the county circuit, all we're hearing at the moment off the back of England's tour of India is how county cricket is geared against spinners getting the opportunity to develop because it's things like you've got to play in April and then in September. What's your take on all of that? Um, I'm a little bit on the fence, to be honest. Um, I agree with certain things, what they said, but England have never gone to... India and dominated. I don't think they can turn around and say England aren't good at playing spin because of county cricket. Um, Cause England have never gone to India and dominated. Like it's just one of those tours that's really different. Um, you facing spin from near on the first over sometimes. Um, but I would like to see more done in county cricket. I mean, I can't remember the last game I played where you get a chance to bowl 20 overs in a day or whatever as a spinner is, you know, when I bowl at the minute, um, it's the odd over before lunch, the odd over before tea. Um, Cause the wickets are just, it's, it's April, they're green seamers. Um, and teams now aren't scared to lose, to try and win. Um, especially teams in division two, they want to go up. Um, they can't go down, so teams are happy to risk losing inside two days to get a win. Um, so you've seen more result pitches across the country. Um, and then you've got the the other end, guys, teams like Somerset, who went completely the opposite and made, made it almost Indian-like pitches, and then they get told they're going to get docked points for producing those sort of pitches. So there's no real win like win for spin in any of those um, sort of camps, really. The, the only thing they could do maybe is get a few county championships in the height of summer, but then I understand the revenue side and the business side of the game where nowadays people want to come and watch white ball cricket and they need white ball cricket in the school holidays. Um, if they can get a sellout for a T20 at Northampton, it's much more beneficial to the game than having a county championship in the peak of summer and having a tenth of the crowd there. Um, 
So I, I do understand it from that side of it, but it is also frustrating that every every game seems to be played on a on a seam of friendly um, on a seam of friendly pitch. And presumably you've watched what's been going on in India. Do you have sympathy for Don Bess for how his winter is gone in the end? I do, yeah, because he's 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 only a young lad. Um, it's, you just want at that age you rely on confidence. I mean, he's he's been picked for England, so he can't be bad. Um, I think we just people have just got to give him a chance. We've seen him take Test five for us. He's done it in South Africa. Um, he did it in Sri Lanka. I know there was a little bit of luck there, but you make your own luck. Um, you can't. People see past it if it's just a fluke. It can't just be a fluke because he's done it for Somerset when he was at Somerset and he's done it for England. Um, I've never been to the subcontinent, so I don't know what it's like, but I'd imagine the humidity and the... I, mean, I sweat enough in England um, after bowling a few overs, so I can only imagine trying to grip the ball in those conditions is a lot more difficult than it would be over here. Um i just like to see people give him a little bit more time. He's very young. He's still learning. You learn every day as a as a professional. So I'm sure he'll come good in the end. In 2016 then, that game against Glamorgan, the 13 wickets, including nine in the first innings. I've got a couple of questions off the back of this. One would be, should you have, have had more of a bowl since? Two, I guess... Who took the 10th wicket in that innings? And, and did you have a bit of a go at them afterwards? And I suppose, third, I'm sure I've read somewhere that you were as surprised as anyone that you got so many wickets. Is that true? Uh, a little bit. It was that wicket was actually meant to be a, um, a green seaming result wicket. Um, but somehow we rocked up on the day and it was dry as a bone and looked like it was going to spin maybe later on in the game, no one was expecting it to spin as much as it was doing. Um, and when I think we batted first and I think Ben got a double, actually Duckett got a double. Um, and we knew it was a good, like we thought it was just flat to be honest. And then their young baby Ton who had never bowled, I think he'd hardly bowled in second team cricket, I think came on and turned his arm over and it started to spin and everyone was like, oh, here we go. This is going to be fun. And then all of a sudden, all eyes turned to myself and Graham White because it's starting to spin. As you do, as soon as it spins, all right, spinners are going to take all the wickets now. So you're already under pressure. Um, and I hadn't bowled mass, massive amount of overs in other games before that. Um, there had always been James Middlebrook, who was the main spinner or whoever. Um, so I was still learning a little bit then as well um, and got the opportunity to bowl a few overs on the bounce and found some rhythm and you sort of get into a zone. It just felt amazing. Everything was coming off the finger so nice, landing in the right areas and everything just seemed to go my way until uh, Graham White decided to not spin one on a... Uh, <laughs> on a buncer and he decided to bowl a straight one and I think Mark Wallace kicked it. Um, so he was the one who got the, uh, got the 10th. Okay. Um, moving on to the blast in 2016, looking at the, the score book, obviously you won at finals day, which is an, an amazing experience. And you were there at the end as well. How, how was all that? Uh, um, I can't really remember it, to be honest. It's so bizarre. Um, I remember being so nervous before going going in and we'd seen Mark Wood was bowling seriously quick and we'd watched it in the game before, actually, when he was bowling at the England boys who were playing for Yorkshire. He was bowling at Root and Bairstow and got them both out, hopping around. Um, and we knew it was only going to grease up and get quicker under lights. Um and then Rips nudged me and said, because I think we were nine for three again, um, <laughs> both both games, which is ridiculous. Um, Rips nudged me and said, if Mark Wood comes back on, you're going to go in next. 
I was like, all oh, right, all oh, right. Crook, Crookie's uh, gone and gave him a nudge and probably yeah. gone, yeah, Kesey will go in. Woody's bowling 94 mile an hour. Send Kesey in next. That'll be all right. Um, and I, th- I just remember being so nervous because the game was getting so tight. But Wakers and Cobby were unbelievable in pulling it all together. Um, once we were nine for three, and I, I sort of went out at a time where my role was so clear. There was no sort of second guessing. It was I had to knock it around because Cobby was in whacking it everywhere. Um, the rate wasn't ridiculous. It was literally get bat on ball, pick up a boundary when you can. Um, and then I just remember there was a mini sort of collapse. Crookie got run out. Um, Rory came out to bat, Rory Kleinveld, and told me my game's based around hitting gaps, running hard, picking up the odd boundary. I remember Rory coming in saying, I'm not running. <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh, great. So I've now got to try and hit boundaries, force boundaries. Um and we managed to get it that somehow got it into the last over. It should have never got into the last over. Um, and I said to Rory, right, they've brought mid-wicket up. Wherever it is, it's going over mid-wicket. He just said, just get it done. <laughs> um, so I had a big heave across the line, managed to hit it well enough um, to get it over mid-wicket and go for four and get clattered by all the teammates. I just remember Cob- Cobby got out Um and just said to me, when we win, make sure you get me a stump. <laughs> so I'm getting this big bear hug from Rory. I could hardly breathe. He's squeezing me so hard. And I remember as soon as he put me down and all the lads came to jump, I sort of snuck round the back and uh, grabbed Cobby a stump because he got, I think he got 90 um, off not many and was the man of the match and just thought he, he deserves his stump, to be honest. So there's a, I think there's a picture actually of me sneaking around the back of the huddle, pulling the stump out of the ground to give to Cobby. And in, I think the same day in the semi-final, you took a, a pretty decent catch by all accounts. Um, I guess we at certainly third team level at Stoney, we don't really practice our fielding enough. In the time you've been a professional, how has fielding practice changing because you see all of those where the ball goes over the boundary and it's flicked back and that stuff so how how has the whole fielding practice changed in in the time you've been a pro um i've always been one for fielding anyway i i used to think to myself if i'm going to try and break into the team are they going to want someone who just bats or are they going to want someone that, you know, can save them 15 runs in the field, um, can bowl a few overs? So I've always sort of taken the approach of trying to do everything just because it gives you an advantage over someone who doesn't necessarily bat or isn't that great of a fielder. So I've always tried to work hard on my fielding. Um, and when I first got into the 2020 side, I was actually batting eight and nine and not bowling and just playing as a fielder pretty much. I was, I was a specialist fielder when Capes um, was head coach and getting sent in in the last over to stand at the non-striker's end and just run a two, basically. He just said, if you get out running a two, you get out running a two. You just need to get Cam White back on strike or Wakers or whoever was in. Um, so my my role was literally a fielder. I was on the boundary from the first over to the last um, just trying to save as many runs as possible and I sort of took that with me when I sort of had more of a role in the games and always tried to keep my levels as high as they could in the field because it's the one thing for me that you can control you can't necessarily with the bat you can't control if you're going to get one that nips back and keeps low or you get a good one you can't can't control that but in the field you can always show that you're giving your all, especially. um, And I just find it helps the time go quicker, especially in championship cricket. You're there for hours. Um, So if you're not wanting the ball, you're not enjoying it, or it can just drag along. Whereas I've always enjoyed fielding. I've always enjoyed diving around and trying to take some good catches. And I feel like that's helped me become a better fielder just by wanting to be a good fielder and working hard. 
I'm just looking at the clock and I'm, I don't know what's going to happen at 45 minutes, whether it just chucks us out with no ceremony. So I'll, I'll fire through <laughs> two or three more questions that I've got here. You have okay. to play all the formats for North Hams. We always hear from professionals how difficult it is switching formats. Is that the case? Uh, it, I found it quite tough a few years ago when we used to play the championship in the week um, and then play a Friday night T20 and then you'd go back and play a championship game on the Sunday. Um, I always found that really tough, especially bowling off spin in the four day games where you're trying to bowl loopy, flight it up. You bowl that in T20, you're going out the stand. <laughs> Um, so you can't really get into a rhythm as a bowler. And as a batter, I've just found like I was driving balls I shouldn't have really, just because you're so used to the Friday night, you're trying to hit it out of the park. And then all of a sudden, two days later, you've got to leave everything. I, a lot of batters struggled, I think, with that. Um, as soon as they turn it back into blocks and you get time to prepare and build up you know you're just playing t20 and you can just work on purely hitting the ball as hard as you can or hitting your gaps same as four day cricket you can work on getting into good positions leaving it um and you get into your rhythm and your tactics come in with the ball as well so now it's blocked i don't find it as hard but when it was the all in the same week i, I did struggle now, I think it's three of your mates at Northampton playing the 100 this summer. Was that something, it, it looked like most professional cricketers at least chanced their arm and put themselves into the draft for that. So did you, and what do you think of it as a format? Yeah, of course. I think most guys would have put their name in the draft. I wasn't expecting to get picked up at all. It was more just stick your name in the draft, you never know, it might happen. You've got two 20, T20 winners medals and a, a runners-up medal. Um, someone might take a punt. Um, I was never expecting anything from it. I think it's a great initiative, a new comp that can hopefully bring some money into, into cricket in England and get kids involved, get kids wanting to go down to Stony Stratford and take up cricket because they've seen guys... Um, smash it out of the park I, I'm hoping it's good for cricket um, and that hoping the guys pick up enjoy it and you know can get bums on seats and get people involved uh, I, there's been a lot of talk about it having a negative effect on county cricket I can't really see that happening um, personally it, if anything it gives guys an opportunity who might not necessarily have got a go before um so we're missing Cobby and Rosso, two top order batters. Um, it gives a young guy who's, you know, first year or second year pro a chance to show what they can do in 50 over cricket when they might not have done if Cobby was available. So it can have can have its benefits. Uh, and looking ahead with your career now, um, obviously, fingers crossed, you've got a few more years left in the tank. Is this your last year, Morehouse, in the current contract? Uh, yeah, run, runs out this year, end of the summer. Okay. Um, you've done a bit of radio commentary, I think. Um, is that something that you're maybe thinking down the line you might take up as a career or, or is there something else lined up you're looking at? Well, I keep getting told I've got the face for radio, <laughs> so I'll too, give it no a <laughs> it's, um, I, I sort of went into the radio once I'd, I got injured. I broke my finger um, and just thought why not? Why not give it a go? I got asked if I'd like to do a game, really enjoyed it actually. Um, and still felt involved rather than just staying at home, looking on the, the scores, seeing how the lads getting on. I actually felt like I was there and I, I did really enjoy it and ended up doing the majority of the T20 um, one season. I was going and doing away games as well. So I was jumping on the bus with the lads, um, doing my fitness with the SNC before have, luckily, my break was on my left hand, so I was still able to bowl in the nets. So I was bowling in the nets before the games, um, doing my fitness, having a shower and going to jump on the on the radio on the commentary. And I did really enjoy it, to be honest. It's not something I've thought of as maybe a career after cricket, but it's I did enjoy it. And if, if something comes of it, then it could be good. 
Uh, and a question from Steve Bell, who, who obviously we all know very, very well. Has your career in first class cricket gone as you'd have expected? Um, yes and no. I think when I was the age playing at Stoney, any first class cricket would have been amazing. Um, and to play, I think I made my debut when I was 18 and I'm 29 now. So to play that long has been amazing. Um, I'd have liked to have scored more runs maybe. Um, but then you can ask any batter and I think they'd always like more runs. So I can't, I wasn't, on the academy, I wasn't expecting to get a pro contract, to be honest. It was just enjoy it while I could. And if I do, I do. And just try and work as hard as I can and enjoy every minute of it. And been lucky enough to play play as long as I have. So I can't really take it for granted. One thing you do sort of forget when you've been in the game for so long, it is you need to enjoy it. There are times where it's so... You get so down, results aren't going your way, you're not scoring runs, um, you're away from friends and family and you almost, you treat it like a job rather than a game of cricket and having fun. Um, and that's one thing I've certainly said to myself and, and close friends and family this year, um, being out of contract, you never know, it could be could be last year, hopefully it's not. Um I just want to try and enjoy it as much as I could because there has been seasons where I haven't um, and it's drifted by and you think, well, I really regret not just having more fun or just, yeah, just, just trying to enjoy it as much as you can. So that's my, my goal for this year, just to try and have some fun and what will be will be. I score runs or I don't. It's, it's, it is what it is. And, and just one final question for all, all of our younger players who are watching. If there was one piece of cricketing advice you could give to our teenagers playing the game, what would it be? Try everything. Um, I mentioned it earlier with the, the field in. Just try everything. I think I I joined North Ants. I was a wicketkeeper. Um, I'm now bowling off spin. Um, <laughs> you just, you never know. Just try the way the game's going. You can't be afraid of trying things. You're seeing now, like Pant reverse sweeping Joffre Archer for six. Is the game's moving forward so quickly. Um, have fun, try things, um, enjoy it, and yeah, just just try and do everything. Like us, follow us, watch us. It's Stony Stratford Cricket Club.